In this video, I'm going to show you how to create panoramas in Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. I'll primarily be showing this technique in Lightroom Classic, but I'm going to jump over to Lightroom or the Lightroom mobile app to show you how you can get started over there as well. And be sure to stick around to the end because I have a quick tip that's going to help you automate this process for other panoramic merges down the road. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm here inside of Lightroom Classic in the library module, and I have a set of eight photographs I'm ready to merge as a panorama. Before I jump into that, though, I want to mention something real quickly that you probably notice. All of my photos here are photographed vertically. If you want to maximize the amount of scenery that you get in your panoramic merges, be sure to create vertical images. You also want to make sure that you're overlapping quite a bit. I usually try to overlap by about 20 or so percent for each frame that I'm shooting. All right, let's go ahead and get to it. I'm going to start out by selecting all of my photographs, and I just use that keyboard shortcut Command or Control A to select all of those images inside of this collection. Now what I want to do is I want to select the one photo that I think represents this scene the best, because I'd like to do a little bit of editing in the develop module before I actually push them over to merging them as panoramas. So I'm going to go over to this image here on the far right and click it. And you'll notice when I did that, the highlight around that photo is a little bit brighter than the others. So if I were to click on a different image and kind of go back to it, you can see a little bit how that highlight changes. All of the photos are selected. I've just selected this one image here as kind of my main selection. So now I'll head over to the develop module. And that photo that I highlighted is that one image that's showing here in the develop module. At the very bottom, I want to make sure where it says sync that that little toggle is checked. That changes it to auto sync. Auto sync is a quick way to edit multiple photos at once when you're in the develop module. All of the images in the film strip that are selected will be affected by any adjustment that I make. So I'll head over to the develop module and I can play around with the profile if I like and maybe change it to something different. I'll go ahead and click auto for tone to see what it does. That was a little too bright. So I'm going to undo that and just make some manual adjustments. I'll begin by increasing the exposure just a touch. I'll increase the shadows to make some of those dark areas a little bit brighter. I'll add a touch of contrast. And I'm also going to play around with the temperature. And I'll go ahead and just slide that temperature slider a touch to the left to remove some of that yellow color cast. I'll do a quick before and after to see what that looks like. And this is a good start to begin with because I can still do edits after I create the panoramic merge. So let's go ahead and jump to that. I'm going to press G to go back to my grid view and I still have all of those frames selected. So I'm going to go up to my menu and I'm going to choose photo, photo merge, and go over to panorama. It tells me here at the top that eight images were successfully merged, meaning there was no issue with my images in their overlap and how I actually created those photos to begin with. Lightroom auto selected spherical, and it actually won't even let me choose any of those other options when I try to click them. So that's the projection that I'm going to be using. Just below that, we have a few options here. We have boundary warp. And if I were to kind of increase this, and if you watch that image when I release, it helps to remove some of that distortion that's created when you actually do this type of panoramic merge. There's also an option here to fill the edges, and you can click on it and see how it looks. But usually when I test this out, the edges still have kind of a harsh line to them. So I'm just going to leave that unchecked, and I'll just go ahead and choose Auto Crop instead, which is going to crop out all of that white space. You can also select auto settings if you want to apply auto settings as you create your panoramic merge, but I already did some editing and I'm just going to keep that unchecked for now because I'm going to make some more adjustments, but I'd like to do them manually. And lastly, you can create a stack. This will stack all of those frames that you have that you're creating this merge with, as well as that panoramic merge to kind of keep everything together. I'll go ahead and keep that unchecked. But if you have a lot of panoramic merges that you're creating, it can be helpful to use that stack mode because it really helps to keep things well organized inside of your Lightroom catalog. So I'm finished here and I'm gonna go ahead and click merge at the bottom. And as soon as I do that, if you take a look over in that upper left section here, you can see that it's creating that panorama. And this can take several seconds depending on your computer and how many photos you are merging at that time. While that's processing, let's jump over to Lightroom Mobile to see how you would push your images over into that panoramic merge mode. 
So I'm in Lightroom and all I need to do here is select all of my images just like I did before. And then I need to go up to Photo, all the way down to the bottom, choose Photo Merge, and then choose Panorama Merge. You'll see many of those same settings that we had in Lightroom Classic, such as Boundary Warp. You can fill the edges. Apply Auto Settings or leave that unchecked, as well as Auto Crop. Merging panoramas in Lightroom is very similar to merging them in Lightroom Classic, uh, but I wanted to show that for those of you who do use Lightroom and don't use Lightroom Classic, so you can still get a lot out of this training. All right, so we're back inside of Lightroom Classic. Let's take a look at that panorama merge. It appeared here inside of my grid view, and it looks like it's a DNG file, so that gives me a lot of data to work with. I'm gonna press D to go into the develop module. And from here, I can just continue to make some edits. So I'm actually gonna start out by adding a preset and I'm gonna use one of my color grading presets. So I'll just click on them to see which one I like best. I'm gonna go with that first color grading preset, but it's a little bit intense. So I'm gonna take that amount slider and move it down to the left to kind of subdue it just a touch. Now we'll go over to the basic panel. I'm gonna take my shadow slider push it to the right. I'm going to add a touch of exposure just by clicking inside of that number and then using my up arrow key to add a slight adjustment. Lastly, I'm going to add an effect to add a little bit of fog to the background of the scene. So I'm gonna add a mask by clicking that little mask icon and then I'll choose linear gradient. I'm going to click and drag from the top and then I'm gonna go over to dehaze and reduce the amount I'm also going to reduce the contrast. I'm actually going to do a quick resize of this mask so I can see more of that fog. And then I'm also going to play around with that temperature slider. And I think I'm going to increase the temperature just to make it a little bit warm as if sun is shining through it. So I'll toggle that off and on, and that's just a really subtle adjustment to add some atmosphere to the scene. Let's take a quick before and after look at this image. And now I have a beautiful panorama of this autumn scene. Now here's your quick tip on creating panoramas really quickly. If you have a whole bunch that you wanna work on, you don't have to go through this exact same process over and over. So I'll show you how to do it. What you wanna do is you just want to select the photos you want to use as your panorama. And I'll go ahead and just use the ones that I showed in this tutorial. Then you go up to photo, photo merge. But if you hold that shift key, you may notice that there's a slight change to what that looks like. I'll kind of toggle that off and on. If I click panorama, now it's going to automatically create that panorama in the background, and I don't have to walk through those steps over and over. It's simply going to reuse the settings that I created with that last panorama merge. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider clicking that like button there on your screen. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.